Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fourth grade concept of comparing fractions. Specifically, uh, we can compare larger fractions that are greater than 1, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So we'll start with a simpler example. Let's say you need to compare 2 and 4 fifths, 2 and 11 fifteenths. Well, the simplest thing is you compare the whole numbers. And if one of these happen to be larger, right, like let's say this happened to be a 3, well, then it's pretty simple. You don't even need to look at the fractions. If there's a larger whole number, then that's going to be the larger one. Most of the time, though, it won't be that simple. You are going to need to go ahead and find a common denominator. What that means is really we can just ignore these whole numbers. If those are the same, then you're going to look straight at the fractions. So let's just look at 4 fifths and 11 fifteenths. You know we need a least common multiple to find a common denominator here. So if we list out our fives, hopefully you'll notice, you know what? You don't even need to list out your 15s because that's not a fact that you should memorize. 15 is going to be the common denominator, which means you don't even need to change the 15s. You only need to change the 4 fifths. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to change 4 fifths into an equivalent fraction by multiplying it by something equal to 1, and it's going to equal our target denominator of fifteenths. So five times what? We go straight across. Five times what makes fifteen? We have to know our facts. That's three because we did our third fact right there, which means if we want to make an equivalent fraction, it needs to be equivalent to one. What we multiply it by, so what is equivalent to one with a denominator of three? Three over three. Three over three is just one whole, which means I'm not changing the fraction. I'm just making it look different. So that's going to be four times three is twelve. So really, I can rewrite this as four and twelve fifteenths. 2 and 12 fifteenths, actually, and that's going to be 2 and 11 fifteenths. Now we can compare. The whole number's the same. Which one's going to be larger? Well, the 12 fifteenths is larger than the 11 fifteenths. So, sometimes it's going to be as simple as that. Let's look at a different example. So, what if I need to compare 13 eighths and 1 and 7 twelfths? So, you have an improper fraction on the left, a mixed number on the right. Well, the first thing I would do is I would make them both look the same, either make them both improper fractions or both mixed numbers. In this case, we'll make them both improper fractions. So I just want to change this and make this look like an improper fraction. How do I do that? Well, you've already got the 7 twelfths. You need to rewrite this whole. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this whole in a way that I can easily add it to the 7 twelfths, which means I need to just write it as a 12 twelfths. 12 twelfths is equal to 1 whole, and I can add that to my 7 twelfths, and that is 19 twelfths. So I can rethink of this as 19 twelfths. Another easy way to think about it is you take your whole number, you multiply it by the denominator, what's 1 times 12, that's 12, add the numerator, 12 plus 7 is 19, and then you keep the denominator the same. So now I've got two improper fractions. If you wanted, you can make them both, both mixed numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and change both of these. They need to have the same denominator for me to be able to go ahead and compare them. I want to list out my 8s and my 12s. Now in a pinch, you can always multiply the two, but that's 96. And you can always change it into the common denominator by multiplying the two, but I don't really want to change these into 96. So I'm going to list out some 8s. Let's do the first 5. 8, 16, 24. 32, 40. Let's list out my 12s. 12, 24. Oh, let's stop. Look at that. I could change them both into 24 fourths. All right, so I'm going to change my 13 eighths. It's going to multiply by something equal to 1 to go to my new target denominator, 24. So 8 times what makes 24? That's 3. So I need to be 3 over 3. So I need 13 times 3. That's going to be 39. All right, so that's 39 twenty-fourths. And let's take a look at this 19 twelfths times something. It's going to equal a new target denominator of 24. 12 times what makes 24? 2. So I need two halves or two twos, and that's going to be 38. So this is really 39 twenty-fourths. This is really 38 twenty-fourths. Now that we have them both as improper fractions with the same denominator, we could easily compare them. And this one is just barely a little bit larger.